you in the Nexus. And welcome back to the European Crucible day number two. And currently, very similar to last phase, the Open Division team is winning. Grummy, what have you thought of the game so far? Leftovers didn't leave any chance to Team Good Guys. It's, uh, it's a rough pill to take, actually, for Team Good Guys, because they're supposed to be the pro team defending their seed, but so far they have barely gotten a kill over two different games in the series so far. They need yeah. to switch something up. It was a zero. It was one kill in the first game. How many was it in the second? Uh, I believe zero. I believe zero. I believe as well. the score was zero five in takedowns. That's so they are one seventeen over two games so far in takedowns. Now, of course, takedowns are not the uh, objective of the game. Uh, yeah. Unlike what some people in quick match or <laughs> Euro League may believe, uh, it's about killing structures. But yeah. Maybe a, a medevac and porting straight for the fort to keep in the core cheese could yeah. win you the game without takedowns, just going for structures Possibly. or heavy specialists. Well, we have, we've seen multiple different things, uh, but we've seen two very similar maps in terms of being very rotational, uh, rotationally heavy. Let's see what the next map is going to be so we can see what kind of play we'll go for. It's a leftovers choice again, and they have chosen to go for the Infernal Shrines. Now, Infernal Shrines is... A uh, three-lane map uh, where the objective is fairly powerful, uh, especially the third onwards, the first and second not that threatening. It feels a little bit the same as Dragonshire, except the lanes are somewhat further apart and there's a little bit more things to do on the map. There's so many uh, camps, five mercenary camps, no boss, just like Dragonshire, that is uh, embodied by the Punisher. Uh, three different Punishers can be summoned. And overall, Infernal Shrines is a very interesting map. Leaves a lot of possible drafts open, specialist style as well. Illidan, Greymane, Abathur, split pushes are a thing. So the drafts could take a little bit of a different character here for either team. Yes, they could. Let's find out though, as it's going to be a good guy's first ban due to the map being a leftovers choice. Let's see where the good guys choose to go on this map. They choose to continue to stick with the theme. The Tassadar is removed. Tassadar doesn't see much play here because he is so strong with his vision, his damage, his utility, the shielding, the enabling of various comps where heroes with low health pools will be getting that shield and being so well sustained. Either team has banned him in the first spot so far every time. And this time it's going to be Rhaegar. So cleanse will be available for Team Good Guys, unlike the first two games so far. Yes, it will. The cleanse is going to be incredibly useful, uh, as we have seen it repeatedly being the saving grace for leftovers, whereas Good Guys have, like you said, they've not really had the chance to pick one up so far. So the Rhaegar first pick is quite a big deal, and it still leads slightly towards what they were doing in the first game, or potentially trying to limit Link's options. Yeah. Lieutenant Morales was a pick for Team Good Guys twice in a row so far. Great single target healing, great infinite sustain, but without the constant damage trading, she doesn't have as much value in a straight up hard engaged team fight. Stage dive was used to pull her out of position often. Lauber's play has been very inspiring, a little yep. bit stronger than BKB's warrior frontlining. Has looked really, really solid. The Johanna. Like you said, being brought back for another attempt. It's been so effective so far. And an Uther to go with it. Very heavy crowd control. They have self-cleanse for Johanna. Hand of protection, divine shield. They're very much limiting the uh, effectiveness of high crowd control comps. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they're making it hard for BKB uh, to find an opportunity. With already two kinds of cleanse available for leftovers. They will not be caught by surprise that fast. And this is basically how Leftovers has decided every engagement, doing a very clean burst of crowd control abilities and damage follow-up. They were able to take someone out from Team Good Guys fast. Now though, cleanse will be available. How well will Team Good Guys use it? Let us find out. Uh, the question is, do they maybe want more? Another cleanse might be good. For now, they pick up some very heavy bursts in the form of Sonya and Greymane Poison Spear, one of the most effective burst abilities in the game already. So could be really solid on blowing up those people. But Uther, very decent with burst protection with heavy armor amounts. Johanna, 
with her own Iron Skin, her own abilities, the Blind, for example, to deal with Grey Mane and Sonya damage. A very strange uh, path to go down. They're just really trying to control what damage dealers leftovers go for. And, you know, going for Sonya against Johanna, I think it's a correct choice. She also gets Wrath of the Berserker, which can withstand much of crowd control abilities. Cuts them in half, basically. Uh, Sonya's damage on Johanna is very relevant, although, of course, Johanna should generally not be her focus target. Yeah. But I think it is the right direction. Uh, execution notwithstanding, Team Good guys, I think, are going definitely in a direction that will give them a lot of stability. Uh, crucially, also, Sonya is a late-game monster and powerhouse oh, yes. uh, to a greater degree than anything they have drafted so far. So, good guys, if they can withstand the early to mid-game, they'll get to a really good spot. Yeah. The first time they haven't picked a cool Dan within their first couple rotations as yeah. well. So they are definitely trying to, they realize they have problems. So they're trying to solve these problems by changing it up. And this is the mark of a great team. Exactly. Now Arthas comes out for the first time. Four Poti boss here on that off lane, that flanker. Stukov again, double warrior, double support. This is how we know leftovers from Open Division, leaving their damage flexed until the last. Now this could be Lunara, it could be Cassia, it could be Vala. There's yeah. three really good options. Maybe even Tracer, though. It doesn't seem to fit in as well. It is a possibility. Unlikely, though, against Sonya and Greymane. I'd really like the Cassia here uh, against uh, Rhaegar, Greymane, all of those heroes would be really solid. Vala's the safe choice. Cassia would be the interesting choice. Yep. Uh, really good control at the Shrine as well. Charge strikes. Eight seconds of bouncing damage that oh, yes. uh, hits everyone equally, all the heroes near the uh, yeah, near each other. Yep, and of course it does also, uh, you have the ball lightning later on as well, which is the go-to heroic, which on uh, Infernal Strides, a lot of people are grouped up so you can get some good value out of that. Now, Team Good Guys, BKB, it has been an issue for them. His engage has seen little follow-up. And once again, we see very, uh, very much uh, a triple damage. I know Sonya is a warrior, but let's count her as a melee mage, yeah. a damage. So triple damage, one support, one tank. A lot more unstable composition that needs to be played to perfection in order to outlast and burst through, indeed, a double warrior, double support uh, comp. Murden and Kalthas. A lot of damage here for Team Good Guys. A lot of damage indeed. So much burst potential, but what's the target? It's going to be like Stukov, right? That's the thing, there's not really a target, right? Like, uh, yeah. you need to spread damage until you see an opportunity. Divine Shield will always take care of the first target. Yeah. Then you've got Double Warrior. Stukov, he'll probably grab Spine Launcher again to stay well back. Probably. Honestly, oh. I'm looking at this and I'm re even though Kael'thas is on the board now, I'm still really leaning towards Cassia. Lunara is what it ends up being. This is another safe choice. Like, Valor would have been the go-to. Lunara is a very safe choice indeed with Rhaegar being the sort of support. That makes a bit more sense. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I do believe if it was double support, Cassia would have both more safety and more merit. Uh, but now, against just one support, even though he's got really good heals to go around in Rhaegar, Lunara can do that role of yeah. safely damaging the front line and indeed almost anyone and then making that poison a, a, a means to prevent and engage, simply because everyone is too hurt. Yeah. And of course, we have the classic combo, Arthas and Lunara. Consistent slows plus unfair advantage equals very unhappy players. Now, if there was double warrior for good guys, we could still see giant killer maybe, but it does seem like unfair advantage yeah. is the go-to pick here. It, it can, like a giant killer can get value on Sonya, but like you said, it's so good. So the fighting style here for good guys. Murdin, he has to stay in front. He can't really dive the back line. There's too much threat on his own back line. So he stands there, stalwart. Flame strikes, probably going to be targeted at Arthas and Johanna uh, whenever possible because they need to deal with that front line in whatever way. And then Sonia maybe can take a little bit more of a role to try and harass the back line, either Stukov and Lunara, take some pressure off, and then Greymane. Uh, a lot of damage on the front line as well. Maybe he'll grab Cursed Bullet. Will be hard to see uh, how you can get a kill easy. It has to be yeah. over some long time, though. I really do like the bird, the Kel'thas here. The bird flesh could be getting so much value. That's true. But let's find out as we head into game number three between these two teams. It is going to be Team Good Guys up against the wall here. And Leftovers looking to move one step closer. Grubby, would you like to introduce us to Team Good Guys? I thought you'd never ask, Tetcher. Here on the left side, in the blue, it's going to be Kronas on Rhaegar. 
BKB will be playing as Muradin, following with Z3 on Kel'Thas. Antihero will be on Sonya, and of course, to round things out, Greymane will be played by Raid Boss. It's Team Good Guys. And on the right, currently two wins away, it is Loba playing the Johanna linked on that Uther coming in. John Paul Diva playing that uh, Ludara here. The Kidney once again coming out with the Stokov and Potiboss is on the Arthas and they are the leftovers. No real special talent picks all too much. We can see that Sonia has gone for Warpaint, auto attack talent. Slight uh, difficulty to deal with Arthur's attack speed slow, but it's still really good to take camps, to get lane sustain, and you still get healing from those auto attacks. Speaking with sustain, Arthur's very good chance he's going to be in the solo lane here against Sonya, has gone for Rhyme. With Sonya going for Warpaint, it's a very high chance that she's going to go for focused attacks as well. Rhyme gives Arthur's a little bit of an easier lane against the Sonya. Yeah, exactly. Good, uh, good talent choices there all around. And uh, anti-hero <laughs> staring down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember them spinning in that film, though. So <laughs> unfortunately, you, you can't not look too around. accurate. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it would be do. cool if it was actually Greymane and Rainer just to kind of fulfill that yeah, uh, fantasy. Be <laughs> uh, when is the last time we've seen James Rainer? Uh, China, about three weeks ago. Anytime you're ready. <laughs> Anytime you're ready. Film full of daylight. As we do see right now, very passive play from both teams. No one's playing super over aggressively. They don't need to. Add here is the furthest one pushing up just because he has really solid wave clear. John Paul Divan Lunara, a true menace to society. <laughs> it's a great uh, late game hero there. Society is certainly a word for it. Uh, for the, to the Nexus. That is a good one as a well. Menace to the Nexus. Yes, and a, a, men, a Menexus. As we see it, the Raid Boss kill off the tower with the help of Antikira and Zay 3. The very heavy damage output is going to land to kill these and probably back up as well before the rest of the team is away. Arrives. Actually, they've been a little slow. The tower lives. This is a disaster. Zay 3, focus down. He goes down. An anti-hero, he will be able to whirlwind away. Living Bomb spreads huge. Gets three heroes with the spread. Tower lives, though, but they were able to get one tower in exchange for a Kale Pass. So this is the interesting kind of move, right? That defines leftovers a little bit to me. Five-man top, while Shrine is active bottom, you lose minion waves mid and bottom. You get your tower pushed by Rhaegar to get a single kill. And you look at the XP, and actually leftovers comes out behind, right? You get that kill with your five top at level four. This is uh, normally, uh, it's quick match level mistakes, but it creates a little bit of a vacuum, a little bit of space that allows them to take the initiative on the shrine. And it keeps the opponent more scared. But overall, that was totally fine for Team Good Guys. It's not like Kel'Thas lost convection stacks or anything. Yeah, exactly. They don't have convection. They've gone for the mana addict, so they don't lose anything with these deaths other than uh, a slight bit of XP going over to West Leftovers. They still come out ahead in that. Yeah, if this was done at level 7, it's worth it for Leftovers. Heroes spread. get more and more XP. But that was early. Little Bomb living. will be key here. They've, it, they, it's been getting such good spreads, but here's the counteraction with the Stukov one good spread. Uh, getting that extra healing output as well to try and counteract this and make it so that his team doesn't have to basically disengage every time a Living Bomb's dropped. Either way, <laughs> for now, Leftovers uh, gonna be backing up here, even more Living Bomb spread, but Team Good Guys pick up the first Punisher of the game. Very low mana pulls here for Leftovers and some uncharacteristic mistakes as they share the Living Bombs like a Fruit Punch at a birthday party. Uh, in this case, uh, taking too much damage here from Kel'Thas. Mana pulls already low, they have to give up the Punisher. Arcane Punisher getting some serious damage. Normally the first Punisher gets maybe two towers? Now yeah. it's got significant damage on the fort. And Team Good Guys uses the distraction to pressure other lanes. Really good job by them. Yep, Anti-Hero continuing the wonders of the Sonya Whirlwind Clear. It's just continually putting pressure onto that Arthas. It's the one thing that Arthas, Arthas should really counter is ability damage until level 20. But you can see Sonya has just been doing a great job pushing up the side and will be able to take down that tower. Now, just a reminder, though Team Good Guys is doing well in this game, it's a best of seven and they're down zero two. So they need to win four out of the potential six maps that are remaining. Furthermore, if Team Good Guys draws their first blood in this game, that will be a doubling of their total takedowns <laughs> in this series so far.
Very true. Right now, leftovers with one kill to zero in, uh, against the good guys in this game. But good guys with almost a full level lead, and that is a very big deal. And right now, like you said, though, the good guys, their backs are against the wall here. They've had a little bit of time, though. That break allows them to use the bathroom, get a drink, and just recenter themselves. Make sure that they are prepared mentally for this. Who are we? We are the good guys. What, what do we, we do? Want? Win! <laughs> and be nice, because that's the name. <laughs> Don't be polite to your opponents while we do it. <laughs> oh, uh, nice camp there by the uh, Rhaegar. Getting the Bruiser camp, the Fallen Shaman. Uh, the next shrine phase is going to be either middle or top, and it's going to be announced momentarily. Top would be okay for the good guys, so that Fallen Bruiser isn't quite as much uh, an easy clear on the way to the objective. Leftovers delayed their own bruiser camp so far. Is it by design or by being too busy? That's the question. They're actually four mid. They are. They're trying to put some pressure on by looks of it, but Murad has actually got them zoned pretty well here just by himself as top lane pushes in with that fall shape. But that tower finally goes down. I really thought that would have died earlier, but Potiboss has done a great job clearing here, and now he's got reinforcements. Reinforcements. Fountain, yeah. That's a big deal. Now it Leftovers is against level 10, so Good Guys has a really good opportunity here to take the entire Punisher. It's going to be a Mortar Punisher. Definitely not the best. Uh, bottom two, I would say. Yeah. Leftovers, however, are completely ignoring the objective here. They've got two members up here to prevent too much damage. Not much they can do, though. While two members are pushing the bot lane, Kael'thas is on his own trying to defend against that, but he's eating a fair amount of poison in the process. And Uther is just soaking and clearing in the mid lane. Akelthas is a really good defender, so he's done a good job to dissuade too much fortification damage against him. And Leftover's objective here is to get level 10 by the time the Punisher will be marching down their top lane. Then the question will be, do they provide a token defense, or do they indeed collapse with all five in order to make not only the defense, but also the counter engage? The answer seems to be a token defense. Arthas to draw the Punisher onwards to take structural damage. No one else coming yet. And Team Good Guys will be using all five to pressure mid. Jumble Diva able to dodge the Storm Bolt beautifully, but does eat a spear, still able to retreat up to his team. Like you said, Leftovers defending mid against the Good Guys. The pressure they're doing while Arthas just drops the defense onto the Punisher. Curse Bullet was dropped. Not getting a huge amount of value, but it does force Good Guys. Uh, it does. Uh, the fact it didn't get too much value forces Good Guys to back up. It was a good cleanse by. Uther there to save Stukov from the stun chain. BKB is uh, doing significantly better than last two games. Murden seems to be a character that really suits him very well. And now pressure on the bottom lane. Fort is dropping lower. Down it goes. Ticking down with the damage. And this is looking so much better for good guys. Yeah, they still haven't achieved a kill, but like you said earlier, it's possible to win without one. They could <laughs> just play around the map and just win the game without a single kill. Yeah, experience soak has looked very on point for Get Guys. They're taking the camps in very relevant timings and very fluently. Now grabbing another Khazra Impaler. A nice setup here by Murdin. Kills the Wisp. Antihero was ready for the flank. And Get Guys will continue to take more camps. Now with the five bot looking to do an engage. They're not level 13 yet. A slightly an anti timing. So they're not going to go full ham for it. Yeah, it's full passive play by the good guys. They're already winning. They're in the situation of this the first time they've actually been ahead in two series, uh, two games. So they are playing a little bit further back. They already have the advantage. They're just waiting for the next objective. So it's a very good chance they're going to win it. Now, team good 13. guys grouped five bots, but let's talk about what they didn't do. Soak experience top would be risky, right? It was a very extended lane. They didn't go mid either. And bottom isn't that interesting of a lane since the fort is already down. So they're not really getting anything extra done. Now with the Storm Bolt, Iron Skin was available. And now keep damage. I like this. This is a more powerful move here than go actually going for mid fort. It's also more surprising. And therefore, yeah. yeah, unpredictable and potentially more effective. Double Limping Bomb as well on those structures, preventing Lulba from actually stepping up to defend them. Just has to pull even further back behind them for fear of taking that Living Bomb damage. Good guys did good damage. Was it enough? It will remain to be seen. Taking position again with the level 13 talent advantage. It looks like Leftovers will be condemned to passivity. Or they make a stand with the talent down. 
Looks like the stand is the play here as they begin to move forwards, slowly just wading through their enemies here. Stukov with a decent zoning silence, but the Sonya putting on too much pressure. Curse bullet and cleanse. Keep Protiboss alive. Sonya is still just being a menace. She's got so much oh, health. Oh, 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 oh. is dropping down. Clutch heal by Link to keep him alive. But now Link gets detonated here. Completely outmatched here. Team Good Guys, they have the level 13 talent lead, but they also play it out very nicely. Anti Hero exactly doing what his character allows him to do. Never dying, beautiful ancestral heal, getting the Punisher, they get the kill on Uther, and threatens many others to nearly die. Team Good Guys, they double their takedown count yeah, in this series. <laughs> difference yeah. is this time he stayed dead. Yeah. <laughs> and stay down. <laughs> As they move in to try and get some pressure. Lava doing so much damage, pulling everyone into the silence. Combo was stuck up beautifully as they turn it round. Raid Boss trying to get a counter kill, but Flailing Swipe, the finishing blow there. And Sonya is also out of, out of position. Arthur's doing crazy damage. Last second whirlwind to try and escape. Living Bomb and the Flame Strikes were good from Zay 3, but not enough for kills. And Leftovers uh, tripling their own kill count. Now, Greymane must have known that he would have gone down. He was low, there was no longer ancestral healing available. It was kind of a last ditch effort to try and take someone down. Two members do go down, but Good Guys is still in the lead. Not quite by as much as they would have liked had those deaths not happened, but they're looking at six forts against three keeps. Some of the keeps have damage, most of the keep walls have been broken open to a degree. So Good Guys is in a really good setup for the next Punisher. But because it just died, Yep. Leftovers will have their own 16 by that time, so it would behoove Team Good Guys to be more aggressive than simply waiting for the next objective. Exactly. Leftovers, they just keep soaking and they're going to get the 16. That's probably going to be the best fight they're going to take on an objective so far. And the last one wasn't terrible. They only lost one member. Level 16 versus 15. And Good Guys would ideally like to have a fight soon. The obvious point of contention is bottom in Kazra Impaler, but Good Guys plays this very passively. There is a big wave top, so I get that wanting to clear that, and there are Kazra Impalers mid, but they don't want to let their opportunities slip by. The chances not taken are the ones we regret the most, usually, people say, and this is a chance to use a level 16 talent. The level 16 talent, they're trying to make a play, but they're being forced to react to these impalers here. And Sonya was busy in top lane, uh, trying to empower this fallen shaman camp, which will also force leftovers to react. But that's good for them. It's more XP that's accumulating behind this fallen shaman camp, which once again approaching to their level 16, which should in theory be there in time for the next objective. And this is where I feel a little critical of Team Good Guys' direction, Tetcher. They had a forced response of leftovers to go top to clear the bruiser, but not a thing was done during that time. No push in on the keep wall, no gank on the stragglers, no setup as leftovers returned. And indeed, level 16 is reached. Leftovers now with a fighting chance. And with just a few skeletons lead, Team Good Guys have lost most of their lead here in terms of fighting. They do have that one level, 4% power level. Uh, with that level and all the damage and HP. But this is it. This is going to be a very game-defining fight. Yeah, BKB jumping into the backline, getting himself out of danger. Wow. And a very quick pause. Imagine a picture that catches a bullet mid-flight. That's oh, a lucky yeah. moment for any photographer. We see the cursed bullet flying. Will it find That's its mark? Cool. Yeah, didn't even see it. <laughs> that, was, that was really cool. A small pause here. Same old, same old. So a little bit of an internet issue here on the side of leftovers. Apologies for that. They're going to try and wait to let that guy come back. Maximum pause is 10 minutes, after which, uh, unfortunately, that would be a default loss. A moment we hope to avoid. Yeah, so I, be I believe it's per map that they get a... I believe so. So, yeah. So, it is consecutive over various pauses, but it's not counted with the earlier mishaps. Pauses, never ideal, but a crucial part of allowing a most fair match possible uh, provided that the player can return early. So we pause yeah. it here at the cusp of what could be the most important fight of this game so far. Exactly. And you mentioned the whole, uh, the pauses are very important, allowing these players the flexibility, especially when it comes to the Crucible, because a lot of these players, uh, Lorba, for example, was tweeting out before this uh, bef uh, yesterday whether he's going to make it into HGC or in his words, go back to serving burgers. This is a situation where if you win, you get that salary, you get more security, the potential for sponsorships, and that can uh, enable you to move to somewhere with 
better internet in some situations, something that I am looking to do personally as well. So the fact that they are enabled to do that is such a big deal. So allowing them, it, it, once they're in their slightly potentially worse situation, to at least get a couple pauses and get some concessions, that's definitely a good thing in my book. Definitely not the worst thing to be serving burgers, but he would prefer to be serving GG's and more shout outs to himself. Lauber always, uh, <laughs> when he plays games where chat is not disabled for the observer, he's always plugging his own Twitter handle. So he would like to serve Twitter handles and GG's. Will he be able to make it with the leftovers into Pro Division? Remains to be seen. We take a look. There is still yeah. disconnect. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to a very quick break, guys. And when we come back, we will bring you back into this series. Don't go anywhere. I once ruled Ashur Nerub. Then came a war I could not win. I was forced to servitude. But here, in this strange place, no one commands my power. I will conquer the Nexus. Those who oppose me shall embrace the web of death. I am a Nubarak. I ruled once before. I shall rule again. The demon Asmodan had his ultimate victory within reach until the opposing heroes dealt him a devastating defeat. Asmodan went back to the drawing board and rediscovered his love of the game. The Lord of Sin became the Lord of the Slam. This is my house. Let's see if you've got Gentlemen, welcome back. We will be getting you into the game again very shortly. But for now, though, the game is still paused. We are waiting for John Paul Diva to return as he is having some slight internet issues. Yeah, we have a few minutes left on the uh, on the rules for that pause. Uh, obviously, an unfortunate moment, but uh, I have no doubt that this is uh, unintentional and unpreventable, uh, his internet. Yeah. Simply uh, didn't give him that uh, opportunity to keep playing, uh, unfortunate, but we do try to have the games be played out. So a few more minutes uh, at the most. We hope for him to come back and uh, then we will be returning. If you just tuned in, this is the HGC Crucible match, a best of seven qualifying match in order to make it into Pro Division. We have an amateur team here looking to make that step. Team Leftovers, they are leading. 2-0 against Team Good Guys. Yes, they are. But Good Guys in this game where we currently have our pause is a pretty big deal. Leftovers are actually winning this game as opposed to the first two games where in the first one they got one kill and it was just on Uther. 
uh, who just straight up revived again straight afterwards. Whereas in the second game, they got no kills. This one, they're having a little bit of an easier time. They've got a huge structure lead, uh, having taken down three forts, and they are doing pretty okay in kills, doubling their personal kill count at least. Yeah, now, Team Good Guys, they allowed leftovers to catch up without trying to force any engagements. Uh, no doubt trying to hold on to their lead in a, the most safe way possible. Level 17 versus level 16. And they're now doing an all-out brawl for the Punisher. It's going to be an Arcane Punisher. Uh, it does the most damage. It doesn't have the lockdown that the Frozen Punisher provides, but it does so much damage with those spinning lasers. It would be a big prize to win this. Keep in mind that Team Good Guys previously launched an assault on the bottom keep wall, taking down a tower and a wall. So yeah. it will be very easy to add their muscle power to that Punisher and go all the way to the keep and try and taking it down. And that'll be the first step of the uh, victory plan for Team Good Guys. And who doesn't love lasers on their map objective, which we're going to see right now as the game is ready again, guys. We told you we'd bring it back and we're heading right back in here as the fight over the Punisher continues. 26 skeletons here for Team Good Guys, 10 for leftovers. Good guys will be able to achieve the rest with Phoenix and Flame Strike. And Leftovers does not want to allow this. They will move out and zone out Team Good Guys, but the damage is real. Stukov now with big heals. Leftovers taking a tenuous hold, a tenuous position here to try and catch up. But there is the Phoenix. 32 skeletons. What will the Phoenix fire? Linked is deliberately drawing fire from Phoenix away in order to deny skeletons. It only took down two. Now with 36, 39, Team Good Guys will grab the objective. And they're going to be moving in with this, putting on the pressure and trying to get the Arthurs there, but good to find shield. And that gives a slight speed boost as well as its invulnerability, and that allows Potiboss to escape. But here is that wall, non-existent indeed. Now the Punisher pushing in with 100%. Divine Shield is gone indeed. No heroics available for leftovers at the moment. And this should be a foregone conclusion of a keep. Perhaps even more. Yeah, the keep. The Punisher has been made the way, but the keep is now being focused. There's enough minions here to tag the shots so that they can kill this. And even if they don't, BKB is here as a great zoning tool. They looking, they're looking for something more. Punisher with the double stun trying to blow up Loma. Good heal by Uthano, keeping him alive. But the core is starting to take damage. They're going for it. A super risky play here, but it's dropping down 68%, down to 50. The Punisher is still healthy. So many healthy bars. And Bravo. good guys, a beautiful call there, nicely executed, and they bring the score to 2-1. It's still in the favor of leftovers, but it's a start. And a quadrupling of their takedown count after the first <laughs> two games with just three takedowns. Team Good Guys played it out beautifully. It turns out that their safe play was instrumental in order to grab the Punisher, in order to grab the game. Wonderful play, saving ancestral healing there, just popping it for good measure on Sonya and going straight for the core. And, you know, from all the games we've seen from Leftovers over the last three months, as we've been casting them in Open Division, this is the most thoroughly that they've been beaten in a single map while they have their exactly. own comfort picks. In Very the playoffs, impressive. like we said, they only dropped one map, and even that one was pretty close versus uh, She Sizen. But good guys. They were in control, even though they didn't get as many kills. They won with the objectives, they won with structures, they had a full level lead at that last fight. I really like what they did there. BKB on Murden looks very solid. Uh, never in as much uh, of a threatening position as he was as Diablo. So Diablo, you charge in and, and there you are. You got to make it work. You don't really have an escape. Murden has layers and layers of protection. So it's a little bit more forgiving, but it's also you're able to draw more fire to stay there deal more damage and uh, have it not be as much of a uh, of a one shot and then anti hero on sonia looks sublime j3 from the back putting fire on just about everybody it looked very solid yeah. We were talking about the Sonya, how it might be a defining factor because it's very different to the two heroes they played previously. And boy, was it. It did a fantastic job in dropping heroes super quick when it needed to. And if not, just focusing structures, clearing lanes, keeping pressure elsewhere on the map. Yeah, as soon as I saw that second rotation, Sonya Greymane, I knew it was going to be significantly better. She She's a great pick against Johanna, which has been an important pick for leftovers so far. So in order for good guys to maintain their seed in Pro Division, they will need to go on in the series and in the draft and continue to follow their own advice of things that have worked so far, beating Johanna 
with Sonia, uh, shrugging off the stunts that Leftovers likes to run with her relentless form of Wrath of the Berserker. Exactly. Really nice to see you there. We're going to be getting the lobby ready for the next game quite shortly. But it seems that break did help out the good guys quite a bit. Leftovers, though, still only two games away from uh, stealing the good guys' spot, whereas the good guys need to win three games. Overall, though, that's still going to feel good, especially as that was a Leftovers map choice. Yeah. I mean, you get first pick and you you take that Rhaegar. That's really nice, of course. You have Cleanse now, you have Ancestral. And uh, I think this is the niche that uh, good ga good guys should keep looking for. Uh, the double support with sustain but no Cleanse and a bit lower damage comp. Doesn't give them as much uh, pressure on the comps that yeah. uh, Leftovers has been running. I would like to see them try to reproduce this. Different, of course, but the same theme. Yeah, mate. Do you think it's possibly time for Leftovers to bring the Chromie up in priority? It's been banned only in second rotation exactly. every time. Do you three, think maybe three times in it a up? row? Exactly. If they get first pick, maybe in their second pick rotation. I would not be opposed to it, especially if they lose another map in a similar vein. Yeah. Then it would be time to bring forward that secret weapon and to <laughs> find out why Team Good Guys at the same time fears. Black Kidney's Chromie, yeah. but doesn't fear it enough to ban it in first. They're banning... Ta uh, good guys are banning Tassadar every single time. We saw a very similar strategy from uh, Diamond Skin last time, where they were banning out the Abathur because they hadn't practiced against it. If it was the same with the Chromie, potentially it would have been jumped uh, would have jumped up higher, or maybe they just don't think it is in that higher pick worthy, uh, worthiness. For now, let's have a quick look at the battleground and see where we're going.